Hello. In this video, I'll walk you through setting up PyHole for ad blocking and DNS on TrueNAS scale, plus using ng proxy manager for local DNS routing. By the end, you'll have network-wide ad blocking and custom domains for your internal services, all from your NAS. If you find these guides helpful, please like and subscribe so you don't miss future tutorials. To start off, let's hover it over to our TrueNAS dashboard and go ahead and install PyHole. So under apps, discover apps, Let's go ahead and search for PyHole, and we'll go ahead and install. The first couple things that we're going to want to update is go ahead and set a web password. Uh, so this will basically make it so only authorized users can access PyHole on your network. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and check host network. Uh, so this will basically bind PyHole to the main network of our system, uh, allowing it to be used as a DNS. So now that we have all that set up, go ahead and install. Once it's installed and running, let's go ahead and head over to our dashboard. Right now, your dashboard won't show any data because your network traffic isn't going through PyHole just yet. If we go under Tools and Network, you can see which devices are connected. But at this stage, the devices will all be red. To start filtering traffic, we need to set PyHole as our DNS server in our router. Log into your router's UI. I'm using TP-Link, so your menu might look different, but the general concept is the same. Go to Advanced, Network, and DHCP Server. And under the Primary DNS, we'll go ahead and set the IP of our Pi Hole. Since you're using your host network, this will be the same as your NAS. Save your changes and reboot your router to force clients to reconnect with the new DNS settings. If you can't reboot right away, devices will switch automatically once their DHCP lease expires, usually within two hours. Now that Pi Hole is our DNS, Go back to the network view, and we'll see that devices routing through PyHole show up as green. Next, let's add local DNS records. Go to Settings, Local DNS Records, and add custom domains for your internal services. These domains are private and only work inside your network. I'll go ahead and add an entry for my Jellyfin service. If you have a public domain, you can use the same records here so you don't have to juggle different addresses for local and remote access. At this point, if you try visiting the service using your new domain, it may not work. PyHole knows the IP, but it defaults to ports 80 and 443, which likely lead to your TrueNAS dashboard. That's where NG Proxy Manager comes in. Let's head back to TrueNAS and get that set up. So the first thing we need to do uh, before we can actually install our reverse proxy is we need to change the default uh, web interface ports of our TrueNAS. If we go under System and General Settings, to the Settings, um, I'm essentially going to use 8080 for HTTP and 4443 for HTTPS. Uh, feel free to use whatever port is convenient for you. Um, I just find these easier to remember. So I'm going to go ahead and save those. Uh, it'll ask us if we want to confirm, and then it'll just have to restart. So once that's all restarted, uh, we can verify that we now have our updated uh, ports for HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, so now we can go and install our reverse proxy. So if we head over to apps, then we do discover apps. Uh, for this, we will be using ng-inx. Um, so if we go ahead and install that, um, the only things we need, actually need to change in here, uh, again, are the ports. Um, so for HTTP port, uh, we want this to be the default port 80, and for HTTPS, we want to use 443. Uh, everything else you should be able to just leave as is. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. This deployment process for, for this specifically sometimes can take quite a bit of time, uh, potentially you know over an hour or so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip to when mine's done deploying, um, and feel free to just come back to the rest of this video once yours is all set up. Now that our proxy manager is all deployed and running, we can go ahead and head over to the web UI and get everything configured. So when we first open the web UI, we'll be greeted with a login. The default values for these are admin at example.com for the username and change me all lowercase for the password. When we first log in, we'll be greeted with uh, an option to edit our user. Um, so I'll go ahead and edit mine. Uh, and then once you save, it'll ask you to update your password if you would like. Um, so I'll go ahead and go through all that and then we can get on with the rest of the guide. Now that we have our user set up, 
go to hosts, proxy hosts, and add a proxy host. For the domain, we'll use the same domain that we used in our DNS record. The IP will be the IP of your service, generally the same as your NAS. And for the port, this will be the port of your service. For example, for Jellyfin, uh, the default port is 30013. Let's go ahead and save. Now that we have our proxy host, let's try visiting to make sure it all works. Go ahead and click on the source. And we should now be able to see our Jellyfin server pop up. You now have network-wide ad blocking and custom local domains for your services. From here, you can keep adding more DNS records and proxy hosts for all your apps. If you want to make them available outside your network, check out my remote access and custom domain guides linked in the description. Thanks for watching. If this helped you out, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment with any questions or topics you'd like to see next time. Have a great day.